Hello everyone and welcome back to the last and uh, final installment of this tutorial series. In this tutorial series what we're going to be doing is making sure that the tanks are despawned when they reach the flags. Okay, So uh, currently they kind of move across the map and they, they reach their goal but when they reach their goal they just kind of crowd around that, uh, that flag. So in this tutorial what we're going to be doing is getting rid of those tanks as they reach their goals. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to need to do um, in, the, in the previous tutorial, we were already creating this unit name, uh, this unit name here, okay, this my flag, okay, but we weren't actually doing anything with it. So what we want to do now is kind of feed that into our, uh, our unit for the goal unit here. Okay, so uh, that's what we're going to go ahead and do. And it's going to be very similar to what we did up here, only instead of using a vector variable, we're going to end up using a unit variable instead. Now, again, uh, just to recap, because it was a bit ago, um, up here we're setting the unit variable. And again, it's got the same kind of a name configuration as our vector variables. So where the vector variable is goal underscore zero, um, what we really want to do is call the unit, which is going to be the flag underscore zero. Okay, so that's all we're going to have to do is just call that unit variable. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we're just going to go right click, add node, and we're going to go variable, and we're going to go get unit variable. Okay, and that's going to allow us to get the unit variable that we're calling up top. Um, so we're just going to connect this to the goal unit. And now, because again, we're already making that, uh, that unit name right here, so it's going to be the goal num, right, whatever our goal num was. We're going to apply it with flag, and it's going to be flag underscore zero, or flag underscore one, or flag underscore two, whatever whatever goal uh, our goal num ends up being. Okay, so uh, so that's really it. And again, we can see that flag underscore zero is listed here, flag underscore one. So when this concatenates, we're going to get flag underscore our goal number. All right, so that's all we need to do is pull that number in. So we're just going to go ahead and go add node, get unit uh, get string variable. So get string variable, we're going to connect that string to the name of our unit variable. And we're just going to make this equal to my underscore flag right there. Okay, so let's do that now. My underscore flag. Okay, so now we're receiving that, that uh, unit variable. Well, we're receiving the name, we're applying it to the unit variable name, which is going to give us the unit, which is up here, right? So this is grabbing the unit. So we're all set here. Uh, let's just make sure I did that right. Um, yep, everything is good. So we're set to go here. So let's go ahead and save our level. So now this unit is being piped into our, our tank. Okay, so let's go into the tank now and let's do something with that input. Okay, so if we go to unit flow, all we have to do now is test to see if the goal that it reaches is the goal that we're sending it. Okay, so um, we're going to go ahead and use some physics. So we're going to go event and we're going to go physics trigger. Okay. And this will test to see if a physics trigger has, a, you know, a physics collision has occurred. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to need to pick an actor. Now we haven't created actors yet for our tank. Okay. So we're going to need to do that too. Uh, but let's just go ahead and set up our logic for the moment. And right now uh, our unit variable is being set over here and it's coming from this input. Uh, the goal unit okay so the goal unit is our goal unit which is what we just set over here so we actually had this set up originally so we're all set to go here and we're creating a new variable uh, called my goal okay and that's basically my goal is going to equal our uh, unit variable which is going to be my flag which is going to be whichever one of these it is chosen up here okay so we're just sending that data right to it um, and that's really all we're doing there Okay, and we're just setting a new local variable within our tank to be able to use for uh, testing purposes. So we're going to go ahead and go uh, variable, and we're going to go get unit variable, and we're going to set our unit variable equal to my underscore goal. Okay, so my underscore goal. Okay, so now we've got my goal coming in. And now we just need to do a compare objects, right? So we're just going to test to see if our physics trigger touches my goal. And we're just going to go ahead and do that now. So we got to go my goal. Um, I'm sorry, it's going to be uh, flow control. 
compare objects. And we're just going to go from the unit and the unit. So we're just going to be testing these two units. So when it touches it, when it touches something, it's going to ask, are you my goal? Yeah, okay, good. If it's equal, we're going to go ahead and do something. If it's not equal, we're going to forget about it. Now we want to do this when it enters. And now all we have to do is destroy the navbot and unspawn the unit. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to go navigation, bot, destroy navbot. So this is going to go ahead and get rid of that navbot. And we want the unit to be my unit. And the next thing we want to do is just unspawn the unit. So we're going to go unit, unspawn unit, uh, unit, unspawn unit. Okay. So this is just going to take it off the playing field. So just to kind of understand what's happening here. Um, once it's agreed that the thing that it's touching equals um, uh, the my goal or the goal that we're telling it, then what it's going to do is it's going to destroy the navbot, which is necessary to kind of save memory. We would just want to make sure that that navbot that the tank is following is destroyed, as well as we're going to unspawn the actual tank. So the, the visual of the tank is going to be destroyed as well. So this destroys the logic that drives the tank this destroys the uh, the unit itself, okay? So we just want to make sure that we do both of those. And now we can just go ahead and encapsulate this and say group. And we're going to say remove tank when it reaches the goal, okay? So that's all we really need to do there. And this logic is pretty much set. We are going to have to set the actor but we haven't got an actor yet. So let's go ahead and start creating our actors. So uh, under the tank, we can just grab the tank itself and just go right click, create physics actor, okay? And um, now we're all set with that physics actor. Now, the, the problem that we're gonna have next is that we don't really have a good collision template to work with, okay? So what we're gonna wanna do is create um, some physics uh, properties that are going to allow us to create a new um, set of parameters for this uh, this stuff over here. So uh, that's going to be our next step. We're just going to need to make sure we have the right shape, template, and collision types. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, move on to that now. Okay, so uh, let's go save, file, save, and let's open up our, uh, what is this complaining about? Error content tank unit. It's probably complaining because it doesn't have an actor to work with. So let's go ahead and give it an actor. Tank is going to be its name, just like up here, tank, right? So that's going to be the same. And we can go ahead and hit save. Now we should find that our uh, log console will not complain at us. Let's see, just to make sure. Yep, expected a string. Most likely that was it. So let's just double check. F5 to refresh, and we're getting no errors. Okay, great. So this is all good now. Um, now all we need to do is go in and edit that... Uh, Edit that collision fil uh, edit the collision filters. Okay, so uh, let's close this for the moment, and let's go ahead and find that collision filter. Uh, so this is going to be found in the root of your project. So go to the top layer root of your project, and then we're just going to go right click, show an explorer. Okay, so if we show an explorer, uh, yep, there it goes. So um, in here, we're going to find this global.physics properties, okay? And that's the file we need to edit. So let's just double click on that. And I'm just going to close out whatever else I had open in here. And now we just have this guy going, okay? So um, now that we have this open, uh, we can see that we don't really have the necessary pieces that we're going to need. So we're going to add those now. So the first thing we're going to do is add two collision types. We're going to add quote tank, oops, tank, quote, and quote, goal. Okay, so this is going to be our tank and our goal. And we're going to want to test to see if the tank is touching the goal, right? So that's pretty straightforward. Um, so that's really all we need there. Now, under the collision filters, we're going to have to add a little bit of mumbo jumbo here. So we're going to go F underscore goal. So filter underscore goal equals open uh, squiggly bracket. And we're going to say uh, is equals hard bracket goal, G-O-A-L. And that's going to be that. And the next thing we're going to need to do is tell the tank that it collides with the goal. So we're going to go F underscore tank 
equals open squiggly brackets is equals hard bracket quote tank so we're just going to say that it's the tank and we also need to do this for the goals so we want to make sure that these are in quotes so i'm just going to put those in the quotes and is tank and that's it for the the hard bracket part and we're going to go collides with equals open bracket quote goal okay so what this is basically saying is this filter is going to test um, to see what it is allowed to collide with so this is just useful so we're ignoring anything else on the board so if we put other collision filters on there that we don't want to test um, this will allow us to only test the things we want to by what this collides with right so we're only allowing it to collide with the goal right right now that's all the only thing that we have if we had other things we wanted it to collide with then we could add those things as well um, but this is all we're going to need for now so let's go ahead and leave it and now we need to put in our collision shapes okay so let's go into our collision shapes and let's go uh, goal equals open squiggly bracket collision underscore filter equals quote f underscore goal and that's all we need for that and the tank is going to have something slightly special so the tank is going to be a trigger because we want to receive that triggering from the tank so we're going to go trigger equals true and collision underscore filter equals quote f underscore tank okay so uh, let's just recap what this is doing so the shape template is going to be testing to see if the you know what is goal going to be using for its filter it's going to be using the f goal and it, the tank is going to be first of all set to a trigger um, so it's going to be able to trigger a response and the collision filter is equal to f tank Okay, so we're just telling it which which filter you're going to be using here okay so that's the last thing that we're going to have to do in here so we can go ahead and save our file so let's go file and save and we can go ahead and close this window now all right so let's minimize uh, windows explorer and now we can go ahead and apply those properties to our tank so let's go ahead and go content models tank and tank and let's look at our tank actor let's set our um, our shape template to the tank we want to make sure that our actor template is keyframed okay because we're moving it with keyframes which are being generated by the bot our node is going to be the tank and we want to make sure that the mesh is equal I'm sorry the type is equal to box okay so that's going to be our type and that's pretty much all we have to do in here okay so just make sure that these are all the same so your node is equal to tank actor template is equal to keyframed the mesh is equal to the tank um, the material doesn't matter but the type is going to be equal to the box the shape template is going to be using the tank template that we just created okay so we can go ahead and save this and the last thing we're going to need to do is set the same kind of thing up for the goal okay so let's go into our flag so models flag and let's go into our flag unit and we're going to grab the flagpole right click create physics actor and the same kind of thing is going to go uh, go on here so we're going to want to make sure that we're selecting the flagpole for the node we want to make sure that the actor template is set to static since it does not move our um, mesh is going to be set to the flagpole which is done by default our type is going to be a box um, our material it doesn't matter and our shape template is going to be set to goal okay so now we have all of that set up and we should be able to go ahead and give this a test so let's close this down let's look at our level viewport and hit the play button and just see how it kind of works and we should see that when the tanks reach their goals uh, that we can go ahead and uh, watch them disappear
and voila, the tanks disappear when they reach their goals. Okay, very simple. Uh, a little bit of, uh, you know, we had to, we had to edit that, that global physics properties file, but outside of that, this is pretty much a cakewalk. Um, and we got everything working nicely. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and call this tutorial complete. And I hope you learned a lot. And um, I will see you in the next tutorial series that I do, hopefully. All right, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.